shit, we just got done with Rolf's theorem and the mean value theorem. And just a quick recap, um, Rolf's theorem, uh, we had a function, let's just draw a new random function here, and you pick two points that have the same y value, okay? And if you take the derivative of the function, which is the green part, you'll find one point in between a point such like that, where um, the slope is also zero. And uh, it can be rotated uh, in any in any degree. So uh, that's what that's basically what the mean value theorem told us. Okay. Now, with the mean value theorem, it doesn't have to be at the same y value. It's kind of getting this right here and rotating it a little bit this way. And um, you find the slope of that secant line, and you'll find a, a point in between those two points where the slope of the secant line is equal to the, the derivative somewhere in between those two points. And they'll have the same derivative. Okay, so you'll have parallel lines. All right. Now, moving on to uh, what we're doing now, uh, we have a function here, and I kept it simple. Hopefully you can get the idea of what's, what we're about to do. We're going to use derivatives here to explain what's happening in between certain points of our function. Uh, here we got a linear function. We have a positive slope here, and if we, which means if you take, you can see the slope here is 4. Okay, You can see the slope is 4. So if you take y prime, you'll get y prime equals 4. Number 1, it tells you that it's positive. Okay, That the slope is positive so that it's above the y-axis. Okay, and if you look at the slope, it is positive. Let's look at the slope of the second function here. Uh, y prime here, we have negative three. See, now, now we know that the function here, number one, it's uh, constant. It's not changing, just like the first function. Uh, number two, it's below the x-axis. So it tells you two things: whether it's below, above the x-axis, or below. Now, if we keep taking derivatives, it gives us more information too. The second and third derivatives, and that's what we're going to be. That's how we're going to be analyzing functions by looking at the derivatives, first, second, and third derivatives. Okay, so increasing curves. These are three types right here. Constant, uh, it, as you can see here, um, the second part. If you take tangent lines, okay, we have positive and increasing. The slope is getting steeper and steeper as you go to the right, and then we have increasing. Uh, slope, a positive slope, sorry, but it's decreasing as you go from left to right, okay? So constant, positive and increasing, then positive and decreasing. Same thing, negative, negative right here, getting flatter, so decreasing, negative here, and getting steeper. To sum, to sum up, the first derivative, if you have the first derivative and you know that the first derivative is greater than zero, then um, Right here is where I'm looking at. Okay, then the function itself is increasing. If it's less than zero, then the function is decreasing. And a zero slope tells you that the function is constant. Now, just below uh, concavity, if we look at concavity on the left-hand side, we have concave up here and concave down. And just as stated, uh, concave concave up is something that holds water. Concave down, if you pour water, it'll spill off. Uh, if we look at the dots, what's true about the derivatives of a function that is concave up? And let's draw tangent lines. And as we see, the tangent lines get flatter and flatter to become zero. And if you go to the right, they become steeper and steeper. So the slope is increasing. Concave down, it's just the opposite. Okay, we have a very, very positive getting flatter and flatter, getting smaller and smaller, it becomes zero, then very, very, very negative. And so we have a decrease. In. And that's what's true as you go from left to right for concave down uh, functions. OK, so let's define concavity. If f is differentiable, the graph of f is concave up, then we know the derivative is increasing on the interval. Concave down, if uh, the derivative is decreasing on the interval. So when you think slope of a tangent line, you should think derivative. When you think increasing, you should think concave up. And when you think decreasing, you should think concave down. OK, so talking about derivatives. Of derivatives, this means what? Second, derivatives and concavity is related to the sign of the second derivative. 
So if the second derivative is greater than zero, okay, then the graph is concave up on that interval. And if it's less than zero, then it's concave down on that interval. So straight lines have no concavity, okay? Because there's no curvature. There are no, no curvature, no concavity. And let's look how it's summarized in this table. First, if we look at uh, first derivative, if it's positive, we know it's increasing. So it's increasing for sure, okay? If you take the second derivative and it's greater than zero, okay, then it's increasing and concave up, and then increasing and concave down if it's uh, less than zero. If the second derivative is zero, then it's an inflection point. What is an inflection point? And I'll just draw one here real quick. Uh, we got x cubed here, I believe, and uh, where it changes concavity. Right here we have a function that's concave down. The inflection point right here is where it changes from concave down to concave up. Now, let's look at uh, the second column here. We have the first derivative. If it's less than zero, we know that the first derivative is decreasing. I mean that the function itself is decreasing. So taking the, direct, the second derivative, uh, positive concave up, negative concave down, zero inflection point. All right, now, if the first derivative is zero, we have a minimum. What do I mean? Well. If we have a function like this and we have a zero slope, then it's a minimum. If and only if you take the second derivative and it's uh, positive, so it's concave up. Now, if you take the first derivative and it's uh, zero, okay, it's either a minimum or a maximum. But if the second derivative is concave down, then you know you have a maximum. So a, a zero slope tells you whether or not you have a min or a max. How do you know whether it's a min or a max? Take the second derivative and uh, it will tell you whether it's concave up or concave down and that will tell you uh, the rest of the story. Now if you take the first derivative and you have zero and you take the second derivative <clears throat> excuse me, and you get zero again that's a point where it levels off and you probably have an inflection point just like a part right here where it levels off okay. and you probably have an inflection point maybe something like this right here and right here. Now, you have to have this table uh, understood and there's there's no ways around it because okay? you'll definitely see analyzing functions on the test probably more than once, chances are. Okay, these terms are just a review of what, what you did in um, Algebra 2 and in pre-calculus. Okay, make sure you're familiar with what each one of those terms mean. Okay, so let's look at A through H. Let me shrink this a little bit. So look at A through H, and then we're going to fill out this chart. Now, for instance, let's look at A, right? Okay, does it have a critical point? Yes, it does. So we'll put a just put like a little mark there. Okay, has a critical point. Is there a minimum? Uh, not really. Nope. But there is a maximum. Okay, is there a stationary point? And there is right there. Okay, where the horizontal there's a tangent horizontal horizontal tangent line. Yeah, there's a stationary point. Is there an inflection point where it changes concavity? There is not. Okay, so keep going, and uh, I'll go ahead and put the answers in a, in a few seconds and try this on your own. And I'll give you about three, two, one, and there you go. How'd you do? All right, now pause it just to make sure. Moving on to the next. I'll go ahead and put it on the next video. This prepares you for homework problem number one.